Hi. Hi. What you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Are you having fun? No. You're not wearing a hat. Because it's a wrap up. It's this time of year. Make me happy you can edit it out. It's not going to fit in the screen. Then you're going to have to lie on your tummy. <laughs> you are so annoying. <laughs> look, I'm a bunny for Easter. There you That's go. what she wanted to show you. Goodbye. I love you so much. I love you too. See you later. everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I'm here with my March wrap-up for 2021, part two. I read a total of nine books this month, but I split it up into two sections because we all know that I am a rambler. So if I were to do all nine books in one video, it would be a thousand hours long. So this is the solution every month. These are the last five books that I read for the month of March. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> The first book that I have is The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chotsky. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved it. It takes place in 1989 France where Severin is roped into working for the secret society called the Order of Babel. His mission is to find an ancient artifact and if he is successful then he will be granted back his inheritance which was taken from him 10 years ago. He calls upon his group of friends and one unlikely companion for help and it's like the story of that. I love this book and these characters. There is so much representation in this book that I absolutely adored. For one, Zofia is on the autism spectrum which I rarely see in books so I was very excited. Hypnos was probably my favorite character out of all of them. I found him to be so witty and funny and he just cracked me up in every scene that he was in. I also was a huge fan of Tristan and his pet tarantula Goliath. I just think that the found family in this book is so well done and I loved reading about it, the dynamics of this group. I was a huge fan of the banter in this book between everybody in the group, I just find them all to be so funny and every encounter that they had with one another had me with a huge smile on my face. Also, can we please just talk about the angst and the drama between Layla and Severin? I live for it and I am so excited to see where their relationship goes in the next book. The magic system was really interesting, but I did find it confusing at times. I was so invested in trying to figure out everything about it. I think that Layla Layla's power or magic, whatever you want to call it, of being able to touch an object and seeing the history of it was so cool. I also found the world building to be a little bit confusing at times, but overall I had such a fun time reading this book. I love these characters and I'm so excited to see them again in the next book when it's released. I don't know if it's released yet, but I need it in my life. Five out of five stars. The next book I have is The Power Couple by Alex Brenson and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Rebecca and Brian who seem to be the perfect couple. Rebecca is an FBI counterterrorism agent and Brian also works for the NSA. On their 20th wedding anniversary they decide to take a trip to Europe with their two children and when Kira, who is 19, doesn't come home from a night out, they begin to worry that something may have happened to her. As they search for their daughter, the couple looks back on their history together and it's like a story of them looking for their daughter but also rehashing a bunch of drama. I definitely think that you should go into this book as blind as possible. I initially went into it thinking that it was solely a book about a kidnapping, which it ended up not being really. It was more of a deep dive into this couple's relationship, which was okay, but I was wanting more of a kidnap story. It was definitely an interesting journey down memory lane for this couple. I absolutely hated Brian. He was not a good person in my opinion, but then again, Rebecca also wasn't very likable either. I was definitely a bigger fan of the chapters in Kira's perspective. It brought the suspense and tense that I like in thriller books. The twists and turns definitely kept me on the edge of my seat and I was very invested trying to figure out what was going to happen to Kira. But like I said, I wanted more of a kidnapping story rather than a deep dive into a marriage, but it was still fun while I read it, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, and I am ashamed of this, but I gave it a 3. 0.5 out of 5 stars. This is a reimagining of the Iliad that focuses on Achilles and Patroclus's relationship. 
and it's like the story of that. It is so overhyped on booktube that I think I had such high expectations for it which kind of fell short and I'm not 100% sure if that's because I already knew the story of Achilles and Patroclus or what it was but I just found it boring and nothing really happened so I was a little disappointed. I think because I know the story of Achilles and Patroclus so well that the book was just way too predictable for me which sounds really dumb to say about a historical book. I mean, like obviously I know what's going to happen but I just I was just bored so I'm disappointed in myself. I'm sorry everybody on booktube who loves this book but I just was not the biggest fan. I will say that the writing of this book was beautiful. It's very well done. You really care for the characters in the end but it was just really slow. I wanted something to happen. Too predictable. You know I'm sorry. So 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is The Ballad of Amy Miles and this is by Christy Dallas Alley and I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows a girl named Amy who since her birth was raised by her grandparents on an isolated compound. After the world fell apart a lot of women were left infertile so Amy has grown up thinking that her sole purpose is to reproduce like her mother once did. When Amy was a baby her mother escaped the compound in order to get away from the government who she believed was trying to breed her. So when Amy's grandfather brings a much older man to the compound in the hopes of impregnating Amy, she runs away in order to try to find her missing mother and it's like the story of that. I was initially very excited about this because I thought it was a big cult book and I personally find cults very interesting but that was not what this book was at all and I was very disappointed in it in the end. I was just really bored throughout this whole story I do really like how Amy's character developed and how she was able to separate what she had been taught for her entire life with how the real world works. I think the exploration of her beliefs was really interesting and I think that a lot of people who grew up in very religious households will be able to relate to this story. I just think that it might give these people a sense of knowledge, for lack of the better word, that you can step away from what you grew up believing and develop your own opinions and that doesn't mean that you're a bad person for having different views than the people in your life. But I will say that I think that her development and her new beliefs were a little rapid and unreal realistic. If she was supposed to be as brainwashed as she was, it took her about a week to change all of her thoughts, which I just don't think would really happen in real life, but alas, whatever. I also was not the biggest fan of the romance because it was extremely insta-love. It was like she literally saw this person and was instantly in love with them, and I just, you know, I don't like insta-love, so I just wasn't here for it. Overall, I just kind of found it very underwhelming, so... 2.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I read was a graphic novel. It is One Years at Ellesmere by Faith Erin Hicks, who I am a big fan of. So I was very excited to pick this up, but I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. This book follows 13-year-old Juniper, who just received a scholarship to the prestigious school, Ellesmere Academy. When she arrives at the school, she is instantly targeted by the school's mean girl and needs to fight in order to stay at the school. There may also be a mystical beast that is living in the forest behind the school and it's like the story of those two things. So this is actually an arc so the first 12 pages are colored but then the book switches to a black and white format which took me out of the story but I'm assuming that the full finished copy is a colored product. So I definitely think that if it was the colors that are in the first 12 pictures. I think that it would be a very interesting read, but I just wasn't a fan of the black and white. But again, that's not this book's fault. It's because it's an arc, so take that as you will. I've always been a big fan of this art style from this illustrator, so I personally really enjoyed it. I was a big fan of the main character, Juniper. I just think that she was really funny. She had some really great witty one-liners. I also really liked the friendship between Juniper and her roommate, Cassie. They were just so sweet to each other and just always stood up for one another, which I really love to see. Was not a fan of the mean girl, Emily. She was very one-dimensional, and I don't know if that was the point, but I would have liked to see a little bit more depth than her character. Character. It was just kind of like she's mean because she's mean. You didn't really get a backstory on her, which this is a middle grade graphic novel, so I mean, you're probably not going to get that in a graphic novel that is only 165 pages, so I mean, you can't really complain, but I'm complaining, you know? 
Overall, I personally found it to be very average, but I think that a lot of people will enjoy it, so take my 3 out of 5 stars very lightly. Alright everybody, so that was my March wrap up for 2021 part 2. If you're interested in part 1, it will be linked down below if you want to check it out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!